lock there. So I promise to try and make the uh, dozen boxes and let the code be available for everyone. Now please note this is uh, in no way an optimal way to do it. It's just me trying uh, to see if I could figure out this uh, problem. So the uh, whole code is uh, here. Just to show the length, that is everything that I uh, needed to make. With uh, one thing that you should know is that I'm using the uh, One Lone Coder Pixel Game Engine. Uh, and I will link to that in the description. It's a great product. And uh, I thank uh, Jared and everyone who has been helping making it. It's a really cool tool. So, I'll just uh, quickly go over the program. Uh, I, uh, what I've made, I need to make a game stage to handle if we are in the start, if we are playing the game, if we are looking at the score, or if we are trying to exit. I also... Uh, yeah, I had to make a struct called line ID. This one is uh, used to uh, send information about lines to and from functions so that we can actually return that information or send it in without having too many lines. In the same way I had to make a class, that's uh, my board. Basically everything is handled in here. And within that board we have three vectors. One vector represents um, the boxes, and it's an int because we need to have three different values at least. We need to have a zero value for a box that is not currently taken. Uh, which is called marked around. We have the one value for the player one if he is taking that box and we have the value two for player two. The same way we also have uh, lines. We have vertical lines and we have horizontal lines. These are only booleans because we don't really care what player have placed the line, only if it's um, placed or not. The board needs to be set up. Go that yourself. We also have a clear code. This is called if you are doing a replay in the game. We need to be able to get the size uh, for drawing functions. We also have a uh, get line hit that is uh, have this line been hit or not. Uh, within this, we are calculating if the this is uh, my mouse position that is passed into it. If the mouse is over a certain line, we will mark the line as hit. So, it's pretty simple. We also have an enclosed or is enclosed function. This is basically the function that uh, tells us that, okay, yes, this box has all four lines around it marked. So, yep, tell that it's okay. In the same way, we also have a uh, make box. Function. Now, this function calls this function, basically. And uh, what this function does is that, uh, first of all, it figures out, okay, what line do we have? It needs to know what player is currently playing. Uh, and it needs to be able to store points to the player playing. Um, yeah, it uh, needs to see how many boxes are set, because you could set two boxes with a single click. So, start it doesn't think you have made any, and then needs to create two ID numbers for boxes, so we can look up boxes later. Now these ID numbers will be made differently depending on if it's a horizontal or a vertical line that has been clicked. Um, and basically the difference is that uh, if the line is horizontal, we will look at uh, the box above and below the line, while if it's vertical, we will look at the box uh, in front and behind the line. So that's basically it. Then we need to say, okay, then we need to check where we are on the board. We are here saying if we are having a horizontal line test, and we are not um, at the bottom, uh, at the lowest line, and we are not at the top of the line. Then we will just check both boxes above and below. 
if it's enclosed. In the same way, if we have a vertical that's not a horizontal line, we will, uh, and we are not at the, the left side, and we are not at the right side, then we will check both in front and behind. Now it's the case, uh, the same here again, but only if we are not, um, or if these are not fulfilled, then if we are not at the, sorry, at the top, then we'll check the top box. Or if we are not at the left side, we will check the left box. Same here, down here, if we are not at the bottom, we will check the bottom box. If we are not on the right, we will check the right box. Um, and after all these have been checked, if the actually works out, if we have made a box, we will get some points, and if it's uh, if it is player one, player one will gain those points. If it's player two, player two will get those points. And if we have actually marked some boxes, we will return true. The reason we will return true is that the player who just marked the box have to continue playing. Then we have an update function. This, um, yeah, sadly my screen recorder is limited in time, so I can't really get to explain everything. But, yeah, what we see here is mainly us hovering over different um, different lines. And we are setting the color depending on is this line we are hovering over marked or not marked. And, yeah, not so much to say here. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, the update of a single line. So, if we are... Um, yeah. yeah, if we are hovering over the line, and if the mine is already marked, we will return a color that is red and nothing else. If we are hovering over the line, but we are, it is not marked, then we'll say then, okay, if we are pressing, it will give us this small color, and if we go into all this checking, is this making a box, what is it doing, and so on. Or, if we are not pressing, it will just tell us that, okay, this line is uh, green, that is, we can click it. Same way, if it's not hovering over the line, it will just say, okay, is this line marked? Then it's white. If it's not, then it's black. It's pretty easy. And lastly, we have is field marked. It's basically the same as with the line, except there's no cheating for the mouse or anything. So we'll just go in and say, okay, is the box at these coordinates that we're given? Is it uh, marked? Uh, nope. Then it's gray. If it's marked to player one, it's dark red. Is it marked to player two? Then it's uh, green. Um, yeah. We've called the app dots online. That will come all the extensions that are from the one loan coder header. I didn't choose to change that in this case. As I said, when we run the game, we will store the information of the mouse. Because I don't want that to change during the runtime. Or not the runtime, but the single loop. Uh, we will clear the screen. We clear it to dark blue. That's our background color. And then we do a lot of checking and drawing here. Um, yeah, not so much to say here. We're going through uh, all the X and the Y coordinates, depending on the board size. While we're going through the uh, X coordinates, as long as we are not at the absolute edge. We wish to draw the horizontal lines, so these. And the same way if we are not at the absolute bottom, we wish to draw the vertical lines. And if we are not at the bottom and we are not at the side at the same time, we uh, wish to draw the fields or the boxes, so to say. In the same way, no matter where we are, we still wish to uh, fill out the dots. I've chosen to draw the dots lastly, because the dots should be on top of everything. It just looks better this way. Um, let's see. 
Yes, and then we uh, draw out how many lines we have and what player it is and all that. Now, what you will notice here is that uh, when we say how many boxes are left, what we're actually drawing is the number of boxes in total minus the number of points the players have. This have to pretty much fit together. Yeah, then we say if we press escape, uh, we will go to exit. If we press R, we'll just go to the score immediately. Um, we have a setup function. Uh, in the setup function, that's where we choose the port size. You can see all the information here. It's pretty simple, straightforward code. Same, we have a show score function that we'll use a lot. And when we start everything, we will create our board. On the on user create, nothing will happen. We don't want a uh, an empty board right now. I don't see any need for that. We will uh, start at the start function. We'll go here. If the start function returns true, that is, we are done with it, we'll go to play. The same happens when we go to the run game. If that's returned true, because we're completed, we will go to the... Uh, show score, and the score returns true. We will go to start, or if we have pressed uh, escape anytime uh, or exit, we will uh, go out of the game. It will return false. When we return false within the on user update, the game exits. Pretty simple. I've chosen to let the pixels be two by two simply because it's easier to see when I record this. So, without any further ado, I will just run it quickly so you can see how it works. And we're doing debug, please note that, and it's running nice and fast even though we are recording at the same time. The OC pixel engine is great. So, we have the screen here, there's no mouse interaction on this part. This is a keyboard up and down. We can choose this nice small board here, 4x4 four four dots. As you can see, it renders 4 dots. When I hover over lines, they turn green, because I've not clicked any. When I click it, it turns white. If I hover over it again, it turns red, because I cannot click it. I will click here. Player 2 got a point, and it's still Player 2's turn. In the same way, now it's Player 2's turn. He just got a point. And now it's Player 1's turn. And he just got a point. You can also see them here. And you can see we have 1 point here, 2 points here, that's 3 points. And we have 6 boxes left, and that's true. Now, if I just quickly complete this, we'll go to the score and play a 2 1 with 7 boxes. If I press start, I get in here, I can choose another board side, and again, everything works. If I get a little bored by this, I could uh, press R, as it says here, to restart. I'll see that they play 1 1 with 1 box. And that's basically it. This uh, works without any problems, and we are running over 800 frames per second. So, I ran out of time there. I will put the, um, the code on GitHub, and I hope it is useful. This was made in Visual Studio, by the way. Have a great night.